And Rawson reports what experts call a serious health threat in our nation's schools that's invisible to the naked eye. Today, National Investigative Correspondent Jeff Rawson is here with what he's uncovered. Hey, Jeff, good morning. Hey, Ann, good morning to you. Important story for parents. Look, as parents, when we send our children to school, we assume they're safe, that they're learning in a healthy environment. But health officials say there is a danger in the air, a toxic cancer-causing gas in thousands of classrooms nationwide. And we found many districts are doing nothing about it. I need to see all eyes facing forward. It's just another school day in Pennsylvania, and these second graders are ready to learn. Let's talk about that. But what these kids can't see, smell, or taste? High levels of radioactive radon gas inside their classrooms. Tests show nearly double the EPA's accepted limit. Of all the environmental exposures you get, this is the one that causes the most deaths. Radon develops from the breakdown of soil and rock, seeping into buildings and the air we breathe. Chronic exposure experts say could be deadly. And perhaps most disturbing, victims usually don't realize they've been exposed until years later, when it's too late. Next to smoking, it is the leading cause of lung cancer. According to the EPA, linked to more than 20,000 deaths every year. Bill Field is one of the foremost experts on radon. If you had to compare radon exposure to smoking, what are these children being exposed to? Well, if a student's exposed, even at the EPA's action level, four picocuries per liter, that's equivalent to smoking half a pack of cigarettes per day. For a child? For a child. Gail Orcutt is a retired teacher in Iowa. When she started coughing, Gail went to the doctor. He said, you have a nodule on your left lung and it's probably malignant. Lung cancer. Lung cancer, right. Had you smoked a day in your life? Never a day in my life, no. On a hunch, Gail tested her house for radon, and sure enough, the levels were high. Doctors told her that's the likely cause. The doctor removed my entire left lung, and then I went through 12 weeks of chemo. Turns out Gail's home, the schools where she taught, and in fact the entire state of Iowa are in what the EPA calls a level one radon hot zone. You taught for years at this elementary school. I did. Did I they did. ever test it for radon? No. And I've always kind of wondered if I wasn't exposed here as well as at home. Most schools don't test. Experts say districts can't afford it. Even though the EPA estimates more than 70,000 classrooms nationwide are at risk. Believe it or not, only five states require testing. And there's no federal law mandating it. Our kids are there for six, seven hours a day, so I would think it should be required. It's like an ostrich sticking its head in the sand. Ignorance is bliss. They just don't want to know. Even when children's safety is at stake? Well, even when children's safety, sometimes money has a much more powerful influence than people's health. So we had an idea. Working with a certified lab, NBC News contacted 40 school districts nationwide, all in radon hot zones. We offered to pay for their radon testing. But all 40 declined our offer or didn't respond at all. Some said the science isn't there. Others didn't give a reason. Here in Indianapolis, school administrators originally said, yes, test three of our schools, even gave us their floor plan so our lab could figure out where to place the radon detectors. But the district suddenly pulled out, with one official telling us, this can only make us look bad. If the levels are high, parents will get upset and want every school tested. Why would they decline it if it's free? I mean, if, if it's a free service, I'd take it. This is Jeff Ronson from NBC News. How are you? So we followed up with school officials. We'd love to interview the superintendent on camera about why your school doesn't test and, and also why you, you declined our offer to test for free. All the districts declined to be interviewed, too. Thing is, when schools do test... What did you guys decide? Experts say it can save lives. In Connecticut, one of the states where it's mandatory, this district got a wake-up call. This kindergarten classroom where we have five- and six-year-olds was at least four times above the acceptable limit by the EPA. 400 classrooms throughout Connecticut tested high. They've all been fixed with new pipes for ventilation. Pushing your chair and line up. And remember those second graders in Pennsylvania sitting in classrooms with elevated levels of the toxic gas? Administrators here were proactive. I think it's imperative that we find out what the situation is, and if there's a problem, take care of it. 
They tested nine schools voluntarily. In one of them, 15 classrooms came in high. School officials are planning to fix it. So why not make all schools test? Once upon a time, the government seemed focused on it. Lots of press about radon. The Environmental Protection Agency was warning today that radon gas poses a potential health risk in thousands of American classrooms. Congress even held a hearing in 1993. The obvious conclusion is that some children in classrooms have more radiation exposure than workers in a nuclear power plant. Congress knows there's a problem. Congress was told 20 years ago there was a problem. And what have they done? Nothing. We contacted the lead members of the environmental committees requesting on-camera interviews. They all declined. One blamed the EPA, another said it's a state issue. Please look. Which means kids continue breathing radon's toxic fumes and parents can't do a thing about it. These are our kids and parents are sending them to school assuming they're going to be in a safe environment. So we just need to guarantee that. Some scientists say more research is needed to figure out the exact risk to children, but many are concerned because just this month, the EPA is slashing its radon program and cutting funding entirely, money that helps schools test. We wanted to ask the EPA why they're cutting that funding, but they declined our request for an on-camera interview. In a statement instead, the EPA told us the federal government is facing difficult budget challenges, but said they will continue the fight against radon exposure. And by the way, and look, schools pose a risk, according to experts, but the EPA says homes pose the biggest risk, and it's actually affordable and easy to fix.